you're trying to learn the upper extremity nerves, aka the nerves in the arm. So let's go to Arm U or Arm University. Arm University is important and you should be able to name some of the nerve injuries that will classically be asked on USMLE and Comlex. So this is a mnemonic right here. Just by using the phrase arm you and name some, we're going to correlate all of the upper extremity nerves to their corresponding injuries. And these are gonna go in order. So let's start with the axillary nerve. So the A in arm you and the N in you should be able to name some nerve injuries uh, they go together. So we're talking about an axillary nerve injury. So the axillary nerve arrives from the C5, C6 distribution and the axillary nerve will get damaged if you have a surgical neck fracture. So the A in arm U stands for axillary, axillary nerve, and the N in name sum stands for the neck fracture or the surgical neck fracture. So the first really high yield bit of information is to know that if you have a surgical neck fracture of the humerus it will damage the axillary nerve and you can remember that because the first letter in arm U and the first letter in name sum go together so A and N axillary and neck or surgical neck so we are at arm university and you should be able to name some of the upper extremity nerves and their injuries the first letters go together so axillary and neck so let's move on. Now we're going to talk about the next letter, R. And R will go with the A and M in name sum. So the R in arm university and the A and the M in name sum upper extremity nerves. So if you haven't already guessed, R stands for radial nerve. And radial nerve comes from C5 to T1. Now a radial nerve injury can be due to either a problem at the axilla or a mid shaft fracture of the humerus. So if you put something up tightly against your armpit or your axilla, you push on the radial nerve and can cause a radial nerve injury. Now this is sometimes referred to as a Saturday night palsy or a crutch palsy. And the reason is, is because the radial nerve runs right through the armpit, if you push anything up against the armpit, you compress the radial nerve and cause an injury. So Saturday night palsy is the image on the left. You get somebody who drinks a little too much, they fall asleep on a chair, I guess this happens on a Saturday night for some reason, and the chair pushes up against the radial nerve in the axilla causing an injury. Of course, for crutch palsy, when you use crutches, you bear all of the weight of the padded top part of the crutch into the axilla. So crutches absolutely need to be padded at the top or they can cause radial nerve injuries. So again, we're talking about the radial nerve, the R in arm university, and A and M in name sum. The A for the axillary compression, which happens in a Saturday night palsy or a crutch palsy, and the M stands for mid-shaft fracture of the humerus. So when that radial nerve comes out through the axilla, it passes over the mid-shaft of the humerus, and you can get the injury there as well if you fracture the humerus at the mid-shaft. So that is the radial nerve injuries, R in arm U, a and M in name sum, A for axillary injury or axilla, and M for mid shaft fracture. So we've done the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. Let's move on to the M in arm university. So the M is the median nerve, and that's going to correspond to the S in name sum. Now we're skipping the E in name sum. That's why I made it lowercase. It's just there to complete the mnemonic. So median nerve goes with the S in name sum. Arm, the M in arm U goes with the S in name sum. So it's the median nerve, comes from C5 to T1, and you injure the, medio, the median nerve if you have a supracondylar fracture, and I pointed the orange arrow to exactly where that would take place. Supra meaning just above, condylar meaning the condylar region. So just above the condylar region, and condylar of course like epicondyle, condylar, so right above where the medial and lateral epicondyle are, the supracondylar area is just above that on the humerus. So if you fracture that area, you're going to injure the median nerve because the median nerve runs right over that area. So M in arm university and S in name sum. They go together, so the median nerve is injured by the supracondylar fracture. Let's wrap up by talking about the ulnar nerve. And U is for ulnar, and it goes with O, M, and E in name sum. So at Arm University, you should be able to name some upper extremity nerve injuries, and O, M, and E 
go together. So we're just finishing the mnemonic now. So the ulnar nerve comes from C8 to T1, and O stands for outstretched fall, and ME stands for medial epicondylar fracture. So regarding the outstretched fall, if you fall on an outstretched hand, you can actually injure the hook of the hamate, and the hamate is a bone in the hand. And actually, the ulnar nerve passes right over the hook of the hamate, and if you fracture that bone, you can really injure the ulnar nerve. So the O in name sum stands for outstretched fall. The M and the E stand for the medial epicondylar fracture. Now look at our picture here. Look where that top purple arrow is pointing. Right behind the medial epicondyle runs the ulnar nerve. So if you fracture the medial epicondyle or you injure the medial epicondyle through one way or another, another you can injure the ulnar nerve. So in ARM University, the U stands for ulnar, and that goes with O, M, and E. In you should be able to name some upper extremity nerves. O for outstretched fall, M, E for medial epicondylar fracture. So that's how you pair the injuries of the nerves with where they're occurring in the upper extremity. And to wrap up this video, I think we can use the nerves, which you see on this slide, and correlate them to their clinical findings. Now the reason that this is important is because some test questions will go after either the clinical findings or they'll go after the location of the nerve injury or maybe the origin of the nerve itself. So like if they're going for ulnar nerve, the answer might be C8 to T1. But in any event, you need to be able to correlate all of this information because they'll give you some information in the question and ask you for some output in the answer. So if in the event they're asking for the clinical findings or even giving you the clinical findings, you need to be able to correlate them to the nerve injury. So by using the letters that you see here in colors, so A, R, M, and U, arm U, using our mnemonic, we can actually use those letters and correlate them to findings. So in an axillary nerve injury, A for axillary, A in arm U, you have problems with abduction of the shoulder, so you cannot abduct. The R for radial nerve in arm university causes wrist drop. So incredibly important in high yield to know that a radial nerve injury will clinically manifest as wrist drop. And I'm spelling wrist with an R instead of a W because it makes sense because we're talking about R for radial nerve. So arm university, the R in arm university stands for wrist drop. A median nerve injury will cause what's called an ape hand, and I use the M in median nerve to remind me that it causes monkey hand. So M for monkey, which reminds me of ape hand, and M for median nerve injury. You can see in the picture what the ape hand looks like. It's like strict adduction of the thumb, trouble with opposition, and a little bit of slanting of those fingers. So look up what the actual wording is to describe what you see, but that's a picture of the ape hand. And then the ulnar nerve injury is easy because they call it the ulnar claw. The ulnar claw. claw. Um, that's what you'll see in an ulnar injury. Arm university, the U in arm U. U for the ulnar claw. But that's it, guys. I really hope that this was helpful. It's a very high yield topic, very annoying to learn. But spending just a little bit of time on this will get you a lot of free points on test day.